I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? Yes, yes, I know. It's been a great day. And I have an author on the show today. Author, um, I'm going to make sure I'm Norman Preston. Norman Preston is on the show today. And before I bring him on, let me tell you something. He has this thriller called Hospital from Hell. You guys know that I'm like this, like, really big wuss i am the scary scary cat like if something like this that just clicks that's not in like a clicking normal kind of sound in my house i'm already running to get a weapon or something i'm i'm, I'm thinking the worst okay so there is no way that i am going to be able to read or see a lot of these horror stories but i love talking to the authors about how and why they wrote them and mr preston's here to talk about his welcome to the show Thank you. Thank you for having me. No nice problem. To be no here. problem. Oh, it's great to have you. So, okay. So let's go back in time a little bit and let's talk about yourself before the books, before all of that. What was, you know, what was your goal before you became an author? Uh, so my goal was actually try to improve healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got into healthcare um, when I was getting my PhD at Bowling Green State University. And, you know, got really interested in healthcare. And then I um, worked at, you know, I, I worked almost, uh, yeah, about 25 years in healthcare doing things like, you know, drug discovery, uh, in vitro diagnostics, uh, you know, marketing, sales, insurance, you know, you kind of name it, I, I've pretty much done it. Uh, and, you know, one of the places that I worked at, you know, it was, was at a hospital and I really got my eyes open um, when, when I worked there because, you know, I wanted to see what went on from, you know, what they call the provider side, which is, you know, how are the doctors treating people? How are they thinking about uh, their, their patients and things like that? And, um, and then I got out of that very quickly and got back into, <laughs> got back into healthcare. Um, and I thought, you know, I, 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 you know, it's to the point where in your career, you know, you look and you say, you've done a lot and, and maybe it's time for a change. And so I decided I, I wanted to start writing about some of the things um, just so that I can kind of let the people, you know, people know um, what goes on. Uh, you know, a lot of people will know about it from a, you know, they call customer service. So they were in the hospital and they had a bad experience and, and things like that. And this is designed to kind of understand, like fill in the gaps, what was going on in the back that you don't necessarily even think about or know about unless you know somebody who's in the business. Oh my gosh. You have just scared the EBGBs out of me. I oh. mean, literally, I mean, you're in the medical profession and you're literally saying you jumped out of the hospital <laughs> like right away. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You got me. This, this this book, okay, is not just a horror story, but it's it's is it based on factual? It is based on fact. It is based on factual things. Yeah, yep. I mean, all the names have changed, and you know, some of the some of the details have changed, obviously, um, and not everything is in there, um, right? I uh, I was there for about a year, but I kind of condensed the book down to about two weeks um, because that's when I really wanted to get out of there. In about two weeks. After uh, two I, weeks. Yeah, my wife said, I've never seen you want to leave a job so fast before in my life. <laughs> you know, because before I'd been at jobs for eight, 10 years, you know, this one, it's like, mm, nope, nope, it's not going to work. <laughs> oh, that is scary. That is, that is super, like, okay, so based on your recommendation and what you've seen, should a person go to the ER or to the hospital by themselves? No, always take somebody with you, preferably somebody uh, who is knowledgeable about the healthcare system. Uh, for example, um, my father, when he had to go into the hospital, um, my sister, uh, she's a nurse. And so she would always go with him, but, and she would know you know, who to ask and what to ask and everything like that so that, you know, he got he got good care. Otherwise, you know, 
they, it, it all depends upon what's going on with the insurance company and things like that. And so you have to kind of know how to na navigate it. And it's not, it's not something that they teach in school. It's not anything that you, they, they, anybody's going to tell you about. Uh, it's just something that you have to learn by, you know, to learn by being there. That unfortunately. is absolutely crazy. That is crazy. I mean, literally speaking, I am like, what? Okay. So we all have to read the book to find out these things. But I mean, that's just like scary. Okay. So you got into the medical field. You really love it. You, you did that. Did you ever think that you would be an author? No, <laughs> no. Uh, and the reason for it is because my, my 12th grade English teacher, she beat it out of me. She says, dude, you will never write. You, your writing sucks. And so... <laughs> Gosh, and so that is you know, way to be motivational teacher. Exactly, Yay. exactly. And so um, the thing there is that in my work, I actually have to write a lot, you know, and a lot of it is very detailed. A lot of and and so over time, uh, people, I got, I think I got better than what my twelfth grade teacher thought I was going to do, um, to the point where you know, I I, I submitted a sample to somebody. Um, who, who's who's a professional writer that I know, you know, and she said, wow, this is actually pretty good. Maybe this isn't, maybe you should pursue this a little bit, you know? And so I really, all of my life, I've had like these little snippets of stories. So I've got like a lot of different short stories that I tell people, tell people about this, you know, tell people when I was in the military and this happened and that happened, but they're all very short story type of things. Um, and, and then, but this one happened, uh, and I thought, okay, I think I can turn my my experience working at the hospital into a novel, um, which was which I was able to do, um, you know, because it's not just a shorter type of thing. It, it's you know, in other words, it built over time, right? Yeah, I mean, there are HIPAA laws against disclosing certain things. So, did you take that into consideration while writing this book? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, no personal information, uh, nobody, uh, you know, no patient information is there uh, or, or anything like that. Um, and in fact, it, it's very funny because um, uh, when you get into the back office of the hospital, um, the patients, they go away, right? Because um, nobody is thinking about them. You know, what they're thinking about is more or less like how to better position themselves to get to the next promotion and things like that. And the patients really kind of don't matter at that particular time. It's like, who did what and how do you sabotage other people's projects and things like that, that really matter. The patients what? don't really matter. Sabotage, so did you just say sabotage? You said sabotage. I said sabotage. You I said, said sab sabotage. You mean to tell me that they're sabotaging the patient? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes all over. Like, for example, uh, you go into the um, emergency room, for example, and you hear these horror stories about, oh, yeah, it, I was there for 13, 14 hours in the emergency room. And, and you say, well, why? Why? That doesn't make any sense, right? Well, it's because somebody here in the back office said, well, okay, I want to have, let's say, 15 beds made available at all times right? So I said, yeah, let's go with 15. That sounds like a good number. But then somebody else says, no, you know what? I think I can save a bunch of money. Instead of having 15, let's just do three, right? And so that means that you've got only three beds and three doctors and nursing staff only there. Someone's saving a lot of money. They're going to show it to somebody else and say, hey, I want a promotion out of this, right? Meanwhile, some poor... <laughs> Some poor person has to sit there for 13, 14 hours because why? Instead of having 15 beds, you only have three. You're kidding me. No, I kid you not. So all that time sitting there, literally, yep. literally speaking, I mean, I understand when the ER is, is busy, that's more understandable. Yes. But when you got like two people there and you're sitting there for hours on end, that is yeah. the reason that's the reason oh i am raising holy hell in that place for no one <laughs> oh. yeah 
You yep. have got to be kidding me. Are you guys listening to this? Can you hear that the reason why we've been spending so much time in the ER when there's only one or even you're in there by yourself 13 hours is because someone else wants to play around with your health. That's the way I see it. Yeah. yeah. Because and money. All, because of money. It all comes down to money. Yeah. And also a little bit of political backfighting, right? Because you got to, you know, someone's vying for promotion and to get promotion, it's, uh, you know, it's like, like the name of the game is how much money did you save the hospital this year? Right. So if it's a, a million dollars by cutting it down to 15 to three, then, hey, you got it. And so we'll make you we'll give you a promotion or whatever. So that's how that works. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. OK, so yep. it's not about saving lives. No, it's about no. saving money. It's all about saving money. That's exactly right. Yep. And even the drugs that they dispense at hospitals. Right. Uh, so a lot of times people, uh, what happens if you go to the hospital and you're taking like, let's, let's say you've got like three or four um, prescription medications that you take. Well, you have to take that information to the hospital. And what the hospital is going to do is they're going to take that and say, okay, well, we need to still have you take this medicine while you're there. But instead of your medicine, we're going to give you our medicine right? Because we want to be able to, number one, bill you. Number two, um, be able to give you a drug that is probably not as effective as, as you might imagine, right? Uh, so sometimes, you know, hospitals, you go there and you're, there's a surgery or something, right? And what they're going to do is uh, uh, they're going to try to give you like the lowest dose and the lowest type of pain medication. So, so you're still hurting, right? Um, you know, because somebody just, you know, basically cut you open to do something, right? Uh, maybe it's to remove an appendix or whatever. And so you're still there in pain and they're going to just do that just for this, you know, you know, so some, you know, vice president of the pharmacy says, hey, I saved us, you know, $2 million because we went from, you know, this, you know, this, this drug that cost $2 to this drug that cost, you know, 35 cents, you know, and that's how that works. I am so mad right now. Oh yeah, it, it it'll anger you. It'll anger you. Uh, and then and then the book kind of goes through and tries to uh, document a lot of you know these kind of like little back office kind of like squabbles and stuff. And this is where COVID kind of comes in, right? Because you know you see you hear about all this. Oh, these these hospitals they kind of didn't know and, and things like that. It's like, well, they actually did. Uh, but a lot of the information was suppressed from them, you know, because again, you have all of these different, you know, you're, you're looking just at the costs, right? Because if you're going to switch a, so for example, if you think of what happened during COVID-19, right? People weren't allowed to go into the hospital except for COVID-19. So if you had other types of things that you needed to go into that was kind of like either suppressed or you had to go somewhere else and things like that right and the reason why COVID-19 became so important is because why money nothing else but money because they would get a big reimbursement from the federal government for all of the cases that came in as COVID-19 right so so that was very interesting I am, I mean, oh my gosh, you would believe, oh, 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 you would think that they would be concerned about saving lives. Like they get, like you, how, why did you get into the health profession? So I, so when I got into the health profession back in 1999, Okay, so it's been a it's been a while, right? I so there is a subset of people, and they're very small, uh, that are kind of like me that are saying, okay, how can I, I look at these problems and say, okay, well, how can I fix it? How can I get how can I get around it, and things like that, and uh, and and their voices can kind of sort of be heard within the community, uh, but not really. It's always have to be. So if you're going to try to help a patient. It's a matter of, you know, there's got to be a dollar 
a dollar amount associated with you helping the patient, right? And so if you can say, okay, well, we're going to help this patient get better, but it's going to make it cost less, then everybody's happy, right? So that's the kind of, uh, uh, how do I want to put this, uh, leveling that you have to have um, for, for all of this to happen. Uh, and so I got in there because I thought, well, uh, now my, my that mind you, my background is in math and statistics. Um, so I've done a lot of things in that area to understand, okay, so how can, you know, how can we um, show that, that patients are going to get better using this drug or what have you? Uh, mm -hmm. And that seemed to work, I think, in, more in the drug uh, discovery phases, because there are, there are some fantastic drugs that are coming out, right? Uh, and unfortunately, they've got a very short time to, to have, only seven years. To, um, to recoup all that money that they spend in drug recovery, right? Uh, so drug discovery, I mean. So anyway, uh, so there's a lot of nice drugs out there that can, that can really help. Um, and then I, but I, then I moved into the insurance realm and that's when I think that I, I was like, well, boy, uh, <laughs> things are a little different here because it's just a matter of a, you know, matter of kind of like a dollar and stuff. And so I've been trying to get back to more of a, uh, you know, how can I help the patient kind of thing? Uh, and I still, ha I have not been successful in that. So that's why I'm thinking, well, I think I probably want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, make a good exit out of that and maybe go into, uh, you know, writing books and things like that. So. Oh my gosh, you haven't been successful in the medical profession with helping. No. The oh my no. God, that says no. so much. Yeah. And a lot they, of people. Oh. Have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, I experienced, uh, you know, so many different times where I was in the hospital or an ER. I, I know a lot of people have where you sat there and you waited and you think that the medical people back there, the doctors, the, the, you know, the CNAs, the HHAs, all that, you know, everybody got to get paid. I'm sorry. Everybody has to get paid. I understand that we're not doing this for free. Got it. But the profession itself is supposed to be life driven. Yeah. Okay. Saving lives, not necessarily always saving money. I understand you have to save money, yeah. but at the expense of the life or death of your client. Yeah. Some of it can, yeah. At the hospital, it's a, it can be cold, you know, it can be cold. So, uh, does, and and the fact, in fact, a lot of the, a lot of doctors though, they get eaten up by it, right? Because they go into the profession with that in mind. My job is to save people's lives, and they'll and they'll basically tell you know, screw the insurance company, we're gonna we're gonna do this, right? And so um, those those are kind of like, uh, and you'll see them sometimes, uh, you know, at hospitals. They're they're the kind of the crusaders type of thing people uh and they work really hard for, for the patient right uh and and then what ha what's happened over time is there there's a group of um people uh that that form a that form a department called like uh, easier, like like patient experience and things like that and so they've kind of they kind of uh so attract people that are kind of like me probably like you as well you know, that are, you know, we need to stop the madness over here and let's start looking at the patient experience. And be because then what's going to happen over time is that if we forget about the patient experience, we won't have them anymore because they're going to seek care elsewhere, right? Because we, it, it is, even though the hospitals and stuff are a, um, uh, kind of like a, almost a, a monopoly, if you will, because, I mean, the thing there is that if you've got one hospital that's better than another, they're going to go there, right? Um, the, uh, if, you, if you're on Medicare, right? Uh, now, mind you, you have to get, make it to 65 for this to happen. But if you're on Medicare, um, there's this thing called STARS, right? I don't know if you've heard about this or not. Uh, maybe you had your, your parents or... Um, 
uh, parents or grandparents have have that. But anyway, stars has a component of patient experience, and if and if a, if hospitals are not treating the patients right, they actually go down in their stars rating, which they which means that the government doesn't pay them as much. They get penalties if it goes down too far, and things like that, right? Uh, so you kind of see that this whole patient experience thing is is starting to kind of sprout up and be more of a buffer, if you will, against some of the cost cutting kind of uh, efforts that that can be really, you know, mind numbingly and and, and really frustrating uh, to to everybody involved. Wow. So I don't want to take too much time with that but you guys man so the book goes through this this is what the book is about yes exactly. oh my gosh yep that is oh i i'm upset <laughs> because i didn't know these things but your book is is a book about these things yeah yeah just yeah, just a little snippet of just at the hospital. And it's just a little snippet. There. Are you gonna write a, a little card? snippet? I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Please do. I'm thinking about you it. You can't yeah. be leaving us with snippets. Mm -mm. Snippets no. don't don't work. Oh my gosh. That is horrible. Just what you yeah. told me. Just just what I that little bit, that little bit that I know right now is like. Err, I want to kill oh, somebody. Yeah. Not literally, but you know, just like, hey, look at what happened here. I, if I could have sued these people, I would have probably won. You know, it's like, it's ridiculous. But the time yeah. limitations on on it is probably worn out by now. But I'm just saying, you know, this this is ridiculous. There's so many people that they, they were supposed to amputate. They weren't supposed to amputate. And they walk out with amputated or whatever. Oh, yeah. I yep. mean, come on. Yep. Well, here's something interesting about amputations. I'll tell you, since you brought it up. Um, do, here's a little known fact. Do you know who in the hospital gets injured the most? Hint, it's not the patient. The janitor? No, it's the operating room nurse, mm. right? So what the nurses will do is that, so let's say that, that, the, that, the, op, that the doctor is supposed to operate on the left leg. Right. And so what they'll usually do is they'll you you know use a mark or something like that prior to surgery so that you know, okay, this is this is this particular, this is the correct leg that I need to be operating on. Right. Sometimes a doctor either forgets or they don't see it or something like that. And they're gonna go and with a scalpel, mind you, and start trying to cut on the wrong leg. And so what operating room nurses will do is they'll throw themselves over the patient and sometimes they'll get cut. From that scalpel, you know, in order to try to save the patient, you know, from you know from from you know the, the wrong procedure, right? Um, so that's kind of like an interesting little um, snippet for you as oh well. So gosh. there are but so I the like operating room nurses. Oh yeah, I the like operating them. room nurses are are really really something fantastic. You know, they that's, really yeah. do help. Yeah, I like them. I, I'm I'm I will be asking for them. A future reference. <laughs> yeah. Who is your operating nurse right now? Your operation. Nurse? Yeah. I will definitely yeah. bring her here now. Yeah. <laughs> I want to shake her or his hand. Definitely. My gosh. So, okay, your book is about this, about all the things, and and and, and this is just a snippet. But you're gonna have to write some more snippets. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am not gonna let you live this down, Mr. Preston. <laughs> you have got to write a second book. I need to know the the rest of this stuff. This is ridiculous. If this is what's really happening, I need to know more. Yeah. And I haven't even read the book yet. Well, yeah, it'll give you a good taste of what goes on. That's crazy. Right? I don't know. I already have a bad taste in my mouth, except for the <laughs> operating nurse or, you know. That oh, one yeah. Right those, there, yeah. The operating room nurses, they're, they're the things that really kind of make the whole thing work. I like right. So, already. yeah. If you're an operating room nurse, I love you. <laughs> I love you. You should be more, you know, all over the place. You should have more uh, different, you know, like other operating nurses there to do different things besides being in the operation room. You should be like, you know, because if that's the way you are and you guys are, are for the client and for the patient, I love you. You're my renegade. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Where can people find your book? Oh, they can find it on Amazon and on Google and on um, uh, Apple uh, Apple Books. Awesome. Yeah, if they want it. Yeah. Well, we're going to put that link in the description box below. Mr. Preston, you're going to have to give us a second part. I am so sorry, because that's probably going to be one of the main reasons and that we're going to get so many comments, hopefully, on this video. If you are upset about the first book and you want to know more, please yell at Mr. Preston in the comments <laughs> below. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but go ahead and make it known that you want a second one, um, because we do need to be briefed on this. And I think that this is something that we all need to know and learn so that when we go to the hospital, when we go to the ER, we can be like, I'm up on you. I got your number. <laughs> That's how we need to be. We need to be up on them because then they will have to step it up. That's that's exactly what they need to do. Mr. Preston, I want to thank you so much. And I'm glad that you're, you're, you know, for us people out there that don't know nothing about the medical field, except I don't feel good. <laughs> thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much, then. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And until next time, guys, bye. Mm -hmm.